Hello everyone and welcome to the St. Mary website. I want to begin this seasonal message with some words of President Abraham Lincoln, whose 1863 proclamation set the last Thursday of November as a day of Thanksgiving. And I quote, The year that is drawing towards its close has been filled with blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these bounties, which are so constantly enjoyed, that we are prone to forget the source from which they come. Others have been added, which are of so extraordinary a nature, that they cannot fail to penetrate and soften even the heart, which is habitually insensible to the ever-watchful providence of Almighty God. In the midst of civil war, of unequaled magnitude and severity, which has sometimes seemed so foreign, to invite and to provoke aggression, peace has been preserved with all nations. Order has been maintained. Laws have been respected and obeyed, and harmony has prevailed everywhere except in the theater of military conflict. Needful diversions of both wealth and of strength from the fields of industry to the national defense have not arrested the plow, the shuttle, or the ship. The axe has enlarged the borders of our settlements and the mines, as well as of iron and coal and precious metals, have yielded even more abundantly than before. Population has steadily increased notwithstanding the waste that has been made in the camp, the siege, and the battlefield, and the country, rejoicing the consciousness of augmented strength and vigor is permitted to expect continuance of years with large increase of freedom. No human counsel hath devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God, who, while dealing with us in anger for our sins, hath nevertheless remembered mercy. It has seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged, as with one heart and one voice, by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. And I recommend to them that while offering up the ascriptions justly due to him for such singular deliverances and blessings, they do also with humble penitence for our national perverseness and disobedience, and commend to his tender care all those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers in the civil strife in which we are unavoidably engaged. To heal the wounds of the nation and to restore it may be consistent with divine purpose to the full enjoyment of peace, harmony, and tranquility. President Lincoln's wisdom is so on point in this day and for our time. I truly appreciate his thoughtful words and wisdom, which leads me and us who have persevered in the midst of our times and trials and remain steadfast and loyal to be thankful. He recognized the signs of the times and he encouraged us, in my words, to pray these times in a spirit of thanksgiving and gratitude. Gratitude is a virtue, a virtue that needs to be cultivated in our world, and it begins with you and with me. Gratitude needs depth of understanding and a richness of purpose. Our thankfulness then, another word for gratitude, must be so profound 
that it leads us to be and become people of courage and strength to do and live the things of God so much that nothing hinders us from expressing gratitude. The rather popular catchphrase, an attitude of gratitude, needs to be more than that, a catchphrase. But it needs to become an authentic, lived reality. I know I try my hardest to be thankful for the gifts offered to me, for the kind expressions from you, the thoughtful gestures that come my way, all of which lead me, and I am encouraging this in you, to a genuine spirit of gratitude. Do something about that inner sense of appreciation you have for others by bringing it out in word and deed. I know that you know that we know we are a busy people, amen. But that busyness shouldn't keep us from doing the things that are right and good and yes, holy. We often chant, I don't have the time. I'll say it again, I don't have the time. But the truth is, no one has the time. We have to make the time. To make the time for the very things to which we are grateful. Our lives, our families, our extended families and friends, our anythings and everythings that bring us joy and hope and love. And truthfully, if we don't make the time, we wouldn't have any of that. Our season of gratitude began with the celebration of all saints and all souls. At the head of this season, if you will, we remember and celebrate our loved ones, here and gone. And this season concludes with this celebration, this feast of gratitude, Thanksgiving, proclaimed to you, to me, in truth, by one president, and still celebrated 158 years later. But let's not cut our gratitude short. Love it and live it every day and in every way possible. Begin your day with a thankful heart to rise and give glory to God. And end your day in a restful spirit of gratefulness at how you have lived in his name. Gratitude is our daily thankfulness. Amen.